Hello, welcome to the interview here on France 24. Torture, beheadings, burning people alive. Uh, the gruesome roster of atrocities committed by the terrorist group that calls itself the Islamic State has fostered rage, revulsion, and horror in the West and elsewhere. But according to my guest today, the brutality of the group belies a cold and calculated plan, a plan to revive a medieval caliphate in ancient lands that the jihadists consider their rightful domain. Uh, Loretta Napoleone, welcome to our studios. You are a, a specialist on uh, the financing of terrorist networks. You've traveled widely to Pakistan, Turkey, Iran, Iraq. You've also advised governments as well. And you make two claims in a new book. You say, one, the West has underestimated, in a sense, the Islamic State. It hasn't really realized its ambitions to create a state. You've also said that they have fallen behind on the technology front and being mm -hmm. able to use new media. And you, uh, essentially, your message is the West underestimates the Islamic State at its own peril. But I want to begin with a much simpler question. Um, we call it the Islamic State group here at mm -hmm. France Vancat. Mm -hmm. um, or the Islamic <laughs> State Organization. Mm -hmm. We've been told, add the word group or organization because we don't want to legitimize them as a state. You say early on in your book, that's wrong. We should call the Islamic State what it calls itself. Why? Because it is a state. I mean, they control a territory that is bigger than France. Inside this territory, they act mm. as a state. They levy taxes. This is how they self-funded themselves. So by calling it the Islamic State group, to a certain extent, um, we are misleading public opinion. It's better if public opinion knows that we're dealing with uh, an organization which has morphed into a state than if they're still thinking, oh, maybe it is not a state, maybe it's just like Al-Qaeda. Mm. So we can defeat it using the same strategies. But um, some people would argue, um, just, to, just to stick with that for a second, some people would argue it really isn't a state yet. It calls itself a state, um, but it's, it's imposed this state through brutal, terrorist, atrocious methods. Well, it is a proto-state, I would say. I mean, it's a sort of state that doesn't have the recognition from the international community. But I wouldn't say that inside this state there is no consensus. Now, one of the uniqueness of the Islamic State is the fact that he seeks consensus among the population. That's very modern. Mm. I mean, he has realized that running a state the way the Taliban did is not going to work in the long run. So their social policies are actually aimed at achieving a consensus among the population. But really, could I, let me just interrupt you for a second there. You almost sort of make it sound like when you talk about Hezbollah in Lebanon, where we know that Hezbollah has a lot of social policies in place. We've seen them, we've reported on them. The Islamic State, it seems, the Islamic State group, I'll say, France yeah. Vancat, uh, it seems that wherever they go, they terrorize a lot of the civilian population. We've reported on it. People flee from them. They are living in cowering in fear. Yeah, but these are population that they don't want into this state. What they're trying to do is to build a very, very homogeneous state. Ethnically speaking, religiously speaking, ideologically speaking, it's much easier to run a state where everybody is the same. Things the like. So consensus among those who are lucky enough to remain and survive. Yes, absolutely. But that's a technique. This is a nation-building technique. And it is working. Mm. Now, of course, this is a region predominantly Sunni. This is a tribal region. This is a region where their kind of legislation, the Sharia, is very welcome. Uh, let's not forget that also. So that is a good base for consensus. Now, of course, if they are Christian, if they are uh, Shia, or th which are considered mm. the enemy, because, of course, they do not agree with the vision of the Islamic State, those people have to go. You were suggesting to me uh, just before the show, um, and perhaps it is a bad term, as you said, they've sort of outsmarted the West so far. Um, in, in the sense that they seem to understand the divisions of the world and be able to play on those divisions, a multipolar world, better uh, yes. than the West. Well, I mean, the Islamic State did not appear on June 2014. He has mm. been working since 2011. He has been working in Syria, knowing 
that there was not going to be any Western intervention because of what has happened in Libya before. So you see, I mean, they actually understand international politics. Better They're, than the Western politicians. Better than the Western politicians. So they consolidated themselves. And then when they wanted us to know that they existed, then they appeared. You know, this is interesting because uh, just in the past couple of days, the Barack Obama administration has actually acknowledged, they said that uh, the Islamic State has been more effective in recruiting, financing, and gaining notoriety across the world than they had initially acknowledged. And now the Obama administration says they want to bring in Muslim academics, religious scholars, to try to directly take the message to Muslims. Is that going to work? Well, I guess Obama read my book, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's going to work. Um, I mean, it's not through academics, it's not through the establishment that we are going to defeat the Islamic State. It is through a different strategy. We should actually recruit young people, people that know how to use social media, uh, people that know how to deconstruct this kind of message that goes through the social media. I mean, deconstructing is the key issue. We have to stop this seduction. We, you know, we saw the use of social media. We saw a sophisticated use of the Internet in the Arab uprisings, which we once called the Arab Spring. You, you address this in your book, but why, just for our viewers, why did, has the Islamic State, I use succeeded in quotes, where the Arab uprising youth failed? Well, that's a key question, because, you know, democracy doesn't work uh, in that part of the world. And partly democracy doesn't work also because we, the West, uh, are not backing the true forces. Mm -hmm. Now, if you were a young Egyptian today who had participated in the Arab Spring and you would confront yourself with a government that is proposing to put in power the same people that were part of the Mubarak establishment, and then you look across the border and you see what the Islamic State is achieving, creating a nation, nation building, the Muslim political utopia taking shape, what would you think? So to a young, disaffected, marginalized Muslim today, there is a brutal logic in what the Islamic State is doing. I wouldn't say marginalized. Because, you know, the people that are joining are also people from the West, Muslim, who have good jobs, who are, who are you know, hmm. integrated into our society. The real seduction is actually the possibility to produce a state which is the manifestation of this Muslim utopia, which has been a dream for centuries and centuries. Going back to the 8th century, the 7th century, we're yeah, talking about. Yeah, I mean, we're talking about something that will offer deliverance to the humiliation of colonization, to the humiliation on living in a foreign land where, you know, you're discriminated against. It's very seductive. And they play very effectively on our base fear. They use modern media and images and YouTubes to show us images that terrify us. Yeah, those images also amplify the strength of the Islamic State. I mean, we have, you know, in Italy, for example, people now thinking that the Islamic State could invade Italy. I mean, they don't have a single plane and they don't have a single boat, but those images, they go straight down to the collective imagination and create this monster. And so the Islamic we, State is everywhere. So we're, what, we're overestimating? We're overestimating the Islamic State? And I think and what we're overestimating is the threat to the West. What we're underestimating is the threat to the Middle East. Underestimating the threat to the Middle East. Um, do you think Right now, European politicians are trying to get there to meet concerted strategy. There's an anti-terrorist uh, conference underway in the United States right now, bringing lots of countries together. Do you think they're going to get it right? Do you think they're going to start to get the message and take the fight? No, I think the... what they're going to do is they're going to agree on bombing a military intervention. And that's not the solution? No. Uh, wasn't the solution in 2003? I mean, we created the Islamic State. But in the if here we, and now, what, ha what happens right now? So we just have to be condemned to wake up every week seeing these new videos, watching uh, Westerners being beheaded? We just have to sort of accept that? No, we can deconstruct. I mean, num number one, we can work uh, on the seduction to 
um, the, of the Islamic State in our countries to our people, right? We're talking about you know, European or American Muslim. Right. We also could use uh, an all-style uh, diplomacy, the 19th century, 20th century style of Speak diplomacy. Speak to them. Speak yeah, to them. Absolutely. You know, go down in uh, secrecy, not on TV, not on social media. Start establishing relationship with people close to them, like the tribal leader. Understand what they want. Do you think they're ready to talk to uh, Western leaders? They no. think they're infidels? They think they're illegitimate? They no, think I don't think they're ready now, but they're very pragmatic. So there will be a point. I mean, they can't conquer the world. They can't invade Saudi Arabia. I mean, you know... They are pragmatic, so eventually we will be able to start a dialogue. It, the Pope suggested it. I mean, it seems to me that the only true politician that we have these days is the Pope. But, you know, the, the truth is that we have underestimated also because we have ignored it. Now, the Islamic State was there in 2011, 2012, 2013. We just have chosen to ignore it until is right here in front of us. Loretta Napoleone, uh, author of a new book on uh, the Islamic State and its uh, networks and its finance, and uh, a very uh, strong, perhaps tough message today that uh, the current Western approach isn't working, and perhaps dialogue at some point will work. I, I thank you for sharing your ideas today, even if they are uh, a little difficult for some people to accept watching this interview. Uh, please come and join us again. And thank you. Thanks to all of you for watching the interview here on France Van Cat.